Yeah. Right. Red eye. <laughs> we are here today with a limited time offer to help you pursue life. <laughs> Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. But first, we have a word from our sponsor. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's already in the VLC player if you're playing that. Yeah, keep going over to the right. Yes, we made this uh, with the help of our wonderful sponsor, Apple. Where's the sound? It's up and up, yep. Nope. Nope. Not working. It did work. Can I have the far right hand side? It's the same as on the keyboard. Basically, we know that this phone serves as a symbol of the thing that rules you, which is consumption, something that you have not been able to break free from. Today we're going to prove why you can't break free from consumption, what it's doing to this world, what it's doing to other people on this planet, and at the very end, we're going to give you a limited time offer to break free from these social ills. Do you want to be in presenter mode? Yeah, it's making it not load. 
So. Uh, just go try it again right now. With this. Just go. Yeah. Uh, I think it. I think it'll be okay. Oh, that's really odd. Yes, that's really odd. There you go. All right. So we have this quote here. Armaments, universal debt, and planned obsolescence. Those are the three pillars of Western prosperity. If war, waste, and money lenders were abolished, you'd collapse. And while you people are over-consuming, the rest of the world sinks more and more deeply into chronic disaster. This is just really... Just click on it again, see if it changed its slide. Did, yeah. All right. So today we have a limited time offer to free yourself from these three pillars of Western prosperity. Right now, consumption rules you. Here's a little bit about that. Examine these shipping contain these shipping uh, containers placed upon these ocean-going vessels. In 1968, the average ocean-going vessel for shipping could carry about 1,500 containers. And here we are in the present, with vessels being built larger and larger each year, up to co containing over 20,000 shipping containers. What has driven this increase? Only consumption. And it is no coincidence that this increase in ship size correlates with this increase and continued increase of an exponential rate in CO2 emissions. Examine this graph as well. This is still a CO2 emissions chart, while over here we see the increased production of cars. We know that, for instance, in some markets like Europe, the automobile industry market is already saturated. There's no need for future vehicles, and yet they continue to be produced and sold. This, <coughs> this solely consumption-driven industry is correlating exactly with this increase in CO2 emissions. We know that consumption is the only driver of these global changes. So we know you all have to absorb this info like, and without any sufficient information to back it up, but in case you don't believe us, I'm just gonna throw some hard scientific facts at you even if you don't believe the insurance companies that made those figures. So Diana Ivanova and her colleagues made this study titled here, I'm not gonna read that out loud, which was peer reviewed and published about the relationship between consumerism and climate change, and there's a couple key points emphasized in this study. So first off, consumerism was much higher in rich countries than it was in poor countries. Surprise! And second, these, th those countries with the higher rates of consumerism had up to five and a half times the environmental impact as the world average. And take a guess, who would that be? Anyone? Donna! Close, the U.S. <laughs> so the U.S. that reported had the highest per capita emissions with 18.6 tons of CO2. Um, yeah. And now for the statistics, and just for some background information, um, the closer a number is a positive one, the higher the correlation is statistically, and any number over 0.8 is a very strong correlation. So guess what the correlation was between GDP per capita and per capita carbon emissions? 0.87, that's real strong. <laughs> so on a global scale, the greenhouse gas emissions from consumer household purchases are driven mostly by the consumption of services, which is 27% and manufactured products for 17%. Yeah. So your ridiculous consumption is responsible for up to 60% of global greenhouse gas emissions and 80% of land material and water use. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> but this isn't just hurting you. This is hurting people all around the planet. So one habit that we as Western consumers often take for granted is our daily access to and use of smartphones. As of 2014, Apple has sold over 500 million iPhones, increasing the number of iPhone users to 43% of total smartphone users. But where do all these iPhones come from, you might ask? Colton is the primary component powering your iPhone or your smartphone device. Laborers working in these conditions often are working 12-hour days in often dangerous uh, climates, and children can start working at <coughs> age 10. Uh, they are earning $5 a day uh, to power your $500 plus smartphone and can't even afford to uh, invest in get the products that are using their land's natural resources. Samsung, who also uses Colton as a primary component for most of their products, 
has claimed that it recognizes the seriousness of human rights violations and environmental pollution problems of mineral mining in the DRC. However, they're still relying on collecting their Colton from the DRC regardless of these known issues in order to meet increasing Western demand. And as this has caused destruction of the natural environment and mountainsides and exploitation of people in the name of Western comfort and consumption, the UN claims that is the engine of conflict in the DRC, creating harmful environments for a multitude of communities for the sake of a smartphone and Western comfort. This products, like many others uh, like it, are manufactured only to break down in a matter of years, forcing us to continue this inequitable relationship with the DRC and its natural resources, uh, which is going to generate further, further uh, uh, gaps in social, economic, and environmental uh, equality on the global scale. So iPhones are the perfect symbol for um, how global consumption causes these inequalities. We've formed and supported an environment which promotes global inequality in order uh, to meet consumer needs and personal comfort as a top priority. It's a vicious cycle and one with stream extremely harmful effects. Uh, currently, just eight, uh, eight billionaires own the same wealth as the poorest 3.6 billion people. And in a world where we can, where we do, um, produce more than enough food for the global population. Food insecurity is at alarming rates primarily in Africa, South America, Southeast Asia, and Eastern Europe, while countries uh, in North America and uh, Europe are, con they continue to consume their fair share. So basically, there are people who don't have enough to eat where you're getting a new phone every year. At the exact same time that you're trying to get the new iPhone, there are people who don't even have enough money to eat. Your desire to get a new phone every year, whether it's because you saw a shiny new Apple ad or because the one in your pocket was designed to break down in a matter of a few years, when really it could have been designed to last much longer. Or your desire to own a second car. Or your desire to supersize your order, to take more than you need, is ruining the entire world. Your purchases don't make you happy. Your purchases rule you. Just try to get out of this cycle. So Matt and I came up with a little game that we're going to play with you guys. It's family fun, it's laughs, it's bonding, and it also explores the crippling effects of consumerism. So you guys ready to play? Madeline's going to come at you with scenario number one. Who would like to volunteer? The lovely dime in the back. Um, all right, so this is a choose your own adventure game. So I'm going to give you a few scenarios, and you can choose between the two options. The first scenario, you are a highly educated and wealthy American. Choose between attending Yale or Harvard for your undergrad. I'll go to Yale. Excellent choice. You've graduated at the top of your class. Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, now choose between accepting $50,000 a year position with a debt consolidation company or becoming a successful freelance journalist. I'll take a journalist. Great, you made a lot of money. Now choose between driving your Hummer to work every day or clearing your local forest to build a custom mansion. Let's go with the mansion. The mansion? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, congratulations. Over the past 25 years of your career, you've contributed to the poisoning of Earth's atmosphere with CO2, effectively poisoning yourself. You die of CO2 poisoning, and much of the Earth life suffers due to an excess of CO2 gases. Thanks for playing, Indigo, but game, game over. over. <laughs> oh, sorry. All right, scenario number two. Who else would like to play? Talia. <laughs> so you are the middle class entrepreneur. Same game. Um, choose between taking over your dad's commercial farming enterprise or founding your own startup organic farm. Um, organic farm. Wow, you're doing so great in business. You're really thriving. Um, now choose between <laughs> suffering a seven year drought due to your unsustainable farming practices or a flock of locusts that wreak havoc on your crop. I think the um, second option sounds interesting. Uh oh, things are getting a little rockier. <laughs> you have no food left in your farm. Choose between walking five miles to the nearest town to see if they have food, or rob your neighbor's house for food. Rob my neighbor's house. <laughs> see where that leads ya. <laughs> neighbors have already starved to death. Looks like the locusts spread farther than we thought. You cry your eyes out quietly and check their cabinets, but they're empty. So, whoops, your country's run out of food completely and you starve to death after a long career in the food industry. How ironic. Much of the planet has a hard time getting access to food and resources at this point. So nice try, but again, game over. I need just one more volunteer. And this scenario is the typical U of O student. How about Rachel? Congrats, you're a duck. Choose between eating lunch at Chipotle every day or Panda Express every day. Chipotle. Good choice, yeah. 
Yum. You study so well now that you're full. Don't worry, you can just go to the rec center next term. Now choose between driving to campus but walking everywhere else or taking the EMX every single goddamn time you leave the house. That one. <laughs> well done, student. You've effectively consumed enough methane producing cows in your meals and polluted the air with enough CO2 to cause global heating on a massive scale. You overheat in the top floor of Didi and nobody finds your rotting corpse for several years, but at that point it doesn't even matter because much of the planet no longer has access to clean water. So, game, game over. over. <laughs> Thanks for playing, guys. You cannot get out of this cycle. You cannot escape this consumption. But that doesn't mean you're a bad person. <coughs> just makes the screen frozen. <laughs> consumption is just making you do bad things. But there is a way to free yourself. You don't have to have it be game over. There is a way to win this game. But it takes, but it takes everyone playing, and it takes everyone doing this on a massive scale. Don't you want to be free? Don't you want the people around you to be free? This is an idea we really latched on to. It's that you have to do less than the average. We've discussed this before, and we're going to give you one more chance to get on board with this. The idea that if everyone is consuming a lot and you do less than that, the average drops. And if everyone continues doing this, the average will continue dropping. This is a movement that Americans can lead. Doing less than the average would make you above average. American excellence is about being above average. It is about freedom. Free yourself.